I wanted to talk about this essay in the New York Times that was published on Christmas Eve, 24th of December, by Gaza City's mayor, uh, Yahya Saraj. So many people over time have called the Gaza Strip an open air prison or a concentration camp. And these sure. are obviously very emotive words. Even British Foreign Secretary David Cameron, formerly the Prime Minister, once called it an open air prison. Saraj's own words demonstrate just how wrong those, those comments are. If we look at some of the stuff he said, there's this bit where he said that the Hamas administration appointed me mayor in 2019. Well, firstly, it's very interesting. We vote for our mayor here in London. Exactly. They obviously exactly. They don't... nominate him. And the Palestinian people don't choose him, don't elect him. So we it... now it's a Hamas man. Exactly. So we, we know fully that if he's been appointed by the Hamas administration, as he puts it, well, he's part of the Hamas administration. He's become the Hamas mayor of Gaza. So the paper has already chosen to give this column, this opportunity to a member of Hamas, a prescribed terrorist organization. Okay. I think that's worth noting to start. But then let's get into the meat of what he says. He says, when Israel began its war on Gaza in response to the deadly attack by Hamas, I was abroad. Now, there we go. That's the first interesting thing. I don't know many prisons where even the mayor could go abroad. Uh, many people from Gaza actually went abroad before October the 7th. Either and they... especially Ismail Haniya family? Well, yes. Indeed, they're, some they're, of Hamas family. Uh, they yes. found those receipts for jewelry he'd bought in Qatar. Sure. And that means that he'd definitely been traveling. Uh, by the way, the Israeli TV make interview with the owner of the jewelry shop, and he said that yes, Mr. Ismail Haniya come to me and uh, buy some rings and some very very important jewel jewelry from me. Yes, he mm. said this. And this is all while, of course, the Gazan people are suffering because the money has been funneled towards Hamas and enriching the leaders themselves, some of whom have, have billions. But we know also that more regular Palestinians were able to travel outside the Strip. There were influencers during the World Cup in Qatar who travelled to the World Cup and posted about it on Instagram and other social media platforms. So it's, it's clear that actually, if you had the money, you were able to travel out through the Egyptian border and then on to Europe or elsewhere in the Middle East. Uh, and I think he proves that himself by saying he wasn't even in Gaza when it started. Um, he then talks a bit about his priorities as mayor. So at one point he says that he'd emphasised the importance of the seafront, making small businesses along it, a promenade, recreation areas and spaces for those businesses, which is interesting because, again, thinking about the Gaza Strip as a concentration camp, I don't remember the seafront promenade or cafes or even the theatres and cultural centres he talks about in Auschwitz. In the article, he actually mentions all these things that maybe sound a little unfamiliar to some people for Gaza. The Rashad al Shawa cultural centre in Gaza City, intricately designed, he said. It's theatre, grand hall, public library, printing press, cultural salon. He goes on and on to talk about Gaza's beautiful seafront, its libraries and archives. He even talks about the Children's Happiness Center. Now, I don't remember seeing a Children's Happiness Center in Auschwitz-Birkenau. I don't remember exactly. any of these things existing in a concentration camp that Jews were kept in, tortured in, enslaved in and killed in. And yet people sure. still choose to describe Gaza that It's way. a crime, and sure you know it's a crime if a Jewish in Auschwitz uh, uh, has an, a pen or has a paper. It's a crime. What is the editor-in-chief? Okay, I know that in my first day here, till now, you help me in writing something and you advise me. The idea that you're, you're focusing on there is that, of course, people write things and say things from their point of view, but there's also then the responsibility of the editors in the New York Times to somehow contextualize what, what's been written there. The idea that they've got somebody who is the Hamas mayor of Gaza City and they've asked him to write in the New York Times in a way that doesn't acknowledge for one moment that he was there responsible even for the digging of terror tunnels. It's a, it's a coalition between the left wings and the Islamists. Exactly. It's, 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 it's a coalition, like here, coalition between uh, the left and, and the Islamists. So this is not a mayor of Gaza, it's a Hamas man article. And he actually, uh, talking of that then, just to, towards the end of the article, he says things like, I feel I'm in a nightmare 
because I can't imagine how any sane person could engage in such a horrific campaign of destruction and death. You might think he's talking about October the 7th, when Hamas stormed over the border, murdered, raped, tortured and kidnapped Israelis, whether they were babies and children or, or people much older, Holocaust survivors, the elderly or, and everything in between. But no, he's actually talking about Israel. The one word that answers that question is Hamas. And the same when he says, why can't Palestinians be treated equally like Israelis and all other peoples in the world? Why can't we live in peace and have open borders and free trade? Palestinians deserve to be free and have self-determination. It's all very rousing stuff for the New York Times, but we can answer all of those questions with the one word, Hamas. I, ha I, have, I have questions to him. Mr. Mayor, okay, Israel gave to your people 20,000 job opportunity to Gaza, man, to Gaza men, okay? And also let uh, the uh, uh, Qatari money to enter to Gaza Strip, okay? What they do? What they do? And what you did in Hamas as a result of that, Mr. Mayor, I am so sorry, but all of this, it's a liar. All and, of this, it's a lie. And beyond that, is, you know, the idea, why can't they have open borders? Well, look what they did without open borders. <laughs> they built hundreds of miles of terrorist tunnels underground with sure. concrete. Sure. Nothing, it's nothing, a city. nothing Metro for the Hamas. people. Exactly. <laughs> not, not shelters for the people living in Gaza, but shelters for the terrorists to hide under the people living in Gaza. And beyond that, the weapons, the explosives, the drones, all of the bombs, everything they've brought in, the motorbikes. From, from 2007, from they are in the power. They didn't build one tunnel to the citizen, Hamas. Okay. They didn't build one tunnel, one tunnel to the women, to the children. Also, military, military tunnel. One tunnel to the people, one tunnel to the audience. What is that?